unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, great. Hey, we're live today, and uh, I just want to say good morning. Uh, we have a very special guest, uh, Justin Pacino, our, my, my co-host, <laughs> and, <laughs> and a very special guest, uh, Stefan Kaup, who uh, hello, gentlemen, who's hello. our uh, Good morning. And who's our Ring Central expert and uh, brings a lot of experience in deploying Ring Central and more from not just a technical side, but from the operational piece of making Ring Central work for a business. So uh, I'm going to start with a little bit about Ring Central. You know, um, I've been doing technology for a long time and we've been, uh, we had a number of phone systems at Valiant and, uh, you know, we started out in-house system. We actually started out with a, a cordless phone sitting on a desk from, from a, a provider and, you know, kind of like that and moved up to an in-house system. Then we had a great VoIP system. Then that company kind of stopped being in existence. And then we moved to a bunch of different companies. So in the end, you know, we, we, we've, been, we've been kind of kicking around for about 12 years or so different VoIP systems. And I got to say that probably Running Central is probably the best in terms of the uh, technology stack of like what's going on inside the company. Um, you know, it's so much more than just a phone system, kind of like the idea that it's just a central hub for your communications and it integrates into so many different places, such as, you know, your Office 365, Google Apps, that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to go too deep into it, but um, I'm going you know, to talk a little bit about, you know, just uh, just kind of in a nutshell, it's a central hub for VoIP and UCAS, which is a UCAS is a term people use is unified communications something, Justin, what else is it? As a service? Uh, yeah, that's it. We're going with that. <laughs> Unified communications as a service. I get in trouble for using acronyms here uh, because I confuse mm -hmm. everybody, even including myself <laughs> at times. Um, so, <laughs> so with that, um, so you know, to kind of step back. So you know, I'm going to give a little bit with uh, Stefan's help, a little bit about our, our experience working with it. So we, you know, we had a bunch of different providers over the years, and uh, was it our what we what we when we reviewed the kind of field of uh, UCAS or VoIP providers or phone solutions, uh, Ring Center always kind of comes up again and it always came up again and again as like a market leader. And um, so when we looked at our own operation, which I think is really important, you know, it's kind of eating your own dog food, they call it, where you just kind of use your own tools that you use for you use for your clients. Um, we, we, we kind of looked at the cost, we looked at the functionality, looked at the integrations, and you know, in a normal scenario, what we found is that the that the Ring Central was a, such a useful way for us to manage our team. Uh, we were really seamlessly having people work remotely, um, using mobile apps, uh, using uh, you know cell phones, mobile apps. I said also uh, some great functionality on the computer uh, in terms of like a, a, a app. You know, the, you know, instead of having to buy handsets, you can use really great uh, sounding headsets. And uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, in the day to day, it's been, it was super easy to roll out. You know, there's always road bumps and road, you know, ro you know roadblocks, I should say, or, or issues. But in the end of the day, so, you know, uh, what I would, I think will be a good place for us to operate from here is now is this kind of give some idea of, um, from Stefan, some of the stuff, of some of the features and that stuff to use that you can go over. Uh, what, what it can bring in the business as like uh, kind of a little bit of uh, the under 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 the hood, should I say? Yeah. So um, obviously, all of us know it. We've been using it for almost two years now. And um, to start for the people who don't have a VoIP system in their offices, um, it's sort of what a lot of people have in their homes at this point that they've gotten through their cable providers mm. with a, a digital phone line. And y y when you made that first switch, how many years ago you did? Now all of a sudden your voicemail messages get emailed to you. Um, you don't have an answer machine in the house anymore. Those type of things. Yeah. And think think about that now for your office on steroids. You know, so it's really just the <laughs> highest level. And and again, there, there's a lot of providers out there. They all have different features, but Ring Central's key features are um, each user um, ha has their own direct phone number, which they call a direct inward dial phone number. Um, which can be turned on, turned off, depending on how your organization operates. Um, that same DID number, that direct number that you would give out to your family, maybe to call you directly or something like that, would also be uh, utilized for um, a digital fax line. So similar to what some people have used with e-fax in the past. Um, it would also be used for uh, video chat conference meetings. Um, they, they actually have up until uh, yesterday used exclusively a, a Zoom platform 
sort of a co-branded type of platform. They actually beta launched yesterday uh, Ring Central uh, videos, um, which is their own built-out platform. Right. Um, so again, uh, you guys have all seen the Zoom meetings going on now. You know, hundred people. Um, so each user uh, within Ring Central gets that feature, and um, Sorry, Stephen, also can I ask texting. You, yeah, but I didn't know we had fax as something we can do. <laughs> yeah. um, can yeah. I send out from that too? Like, uh, if somebody, if I need to fax something back and yeah, like so fax and print and sign and, and right. do that uh, stuff, I'm thinking like for filling out uh, forms or insurance stuff sometimes. Sure, obviously. Um, when we get back to the office and we get back to the new nor the old normal life stuff, <laughs> yeah, right. um, and you have that desk phone on your desk, um, don't try to put paper in there and fax. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right. So right. the faxing obvi obviously works from, from your computer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be honest, um, I've been on Ring Central myself uh, in various forms for the last six, seven years. And most of the faxing I have done have been from my cell phone, from the, really? the Ring Central app on my phone. Right. Um, I have I have a lot of my documents saved in different various Dropbox kind of apps on my phone. Um, I can uh, drop an app, a, a document right in there, um, and fax right from my phone. And that's so cool. that's that. that's been fantastic. So that's obviously cool. the same thing works from your desktop using right. um, the. Uh, the desktop app, which is fantastic. It's sort yeah. of like a, a communications hub on your computer. Um, there's also a feature that you can send it directly from your email. There's a, a, a special uh, extension you would type in at yeah. the end of your email. So if you had like a, a PDF document and you emailed it to someone, you could send it, um, you know, actually just as an attachment from an email, but it would go through the fax oh, yeah. process yeah, if you to said, get to the other end. It's almost like some of the other faxing, uh, electronic faxing services. But if you if you put the special, as Stefan said, the special uh, email address, it then converts it over. Um, so, actually, um, so from there, um, actually, we got a we got a, a live question. I'm really excited. Uh, is all this managed from the Ring Central desktop app? That's a great question, Steph. I'm gonna leave it to yeah. you. So everything we talked about here, obviously, the. If you want to utilize the faxing, and uh, we didn't get to the texting part, so you can do texting. So if, if you don't want to give out your personal uh, cell phone number for text purposes, you can use your DID number from Ring Central. So the place where you can do everything is uh, the desktop app and the cell phone app. Um, right. Obviously, you're limited with, with an actual desk phone. You can't text from there. You can't fax from there. You can take right. calls, transfer calls, all the, the regular business operations. Um, but your 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 desktop uh, app is really uh, a robust uh, sort of hub, right? For every, everything. You know, um, I think that one of the operational things that we've used it for, and Justin, if I'm talking crazy, stop mm -hmm. me. Uh, we use it for on call. So, like when mm -hmm. someone does an on call versus having to give out cell phones or do a call forwarding, the actual live numbers come in. You can see who's calling. You can call back from the desk phone. It, it just becomes a lot easier for our engineers to work, so that mm -hmm. they can be, you know, they can be working and know. So, you know, we have managers on call as well. They can see who's calling. They have some visibility in what's going on versus having people call. Um, uh, outside numbers, inside that sort of thing. So it's really cool. Actually, we have another question came in. That's a great one uh, from, <laughs> from Hudson Fusion. So uh, <laughs> great friend of ours. Uh, Hello. Do, you, Hello. <laughs> do you still get numbers from the phone company? That's a great um, question. So, so, so here we are in New York City, um, and basically a two one two phone number is is more uh, valuable than a bar of gold. <laughs> so, right. They they are uh, pretty much uh, non-existent anymore. Right. So the the phone numbers that you get would be um, transferred over. So if you have an existing phone number that you utilize, they you can transfer that into Ring Central. They call that a porting process. Mm -hmm. um, that that being said, if you don't have existing phone numbers, if you're a startup or you are a um, um, or just a new company, and you're getting a whole new system. There, Ring Central will supply you with phone numbers. The trouble being that they are so limited at this point. You can request down to so for New York City right now, um, or the surrounding areas. You know, you can pretty much get six four six and nine one seven numbers for those people locally here. 
Um, but you can pick the extension, the, the, the area code you want. Um, right. And the, the the trouble is that they tend not to be consecutive numbers. So if you're right. if you have ten people in the office and you'd like to have fifty four hundred, fifty four hundred one, two, three, four, five, probably really tough. Uh, that being said, you probably have a tough time with any carrier doing that at this point. Right. Um, right. But again, with with the idea of selecting area codes, another add on. So if you were a company that had a um, a an office in California and wanted a local presence there. So your New York office with Ring Central, you could add on an area code for California so right. that your California clients could just dial 310 or whatever the uh, the local number is out right. there right. and reach you. And that would, that pretty much goes worldwide. Uh, right. You know, you can pick wherever you want to be if you want a local presence. Can you Very do cool. uh, 800 numbers? Uh, so you you get an eight hundred number with your your basic oh, Ring Central setup. I didn't know that either. So that 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 that's a standard feature. Uh, that's one number that's a, sort of linked to your main number. So when you sign up for Ring Central, mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry, you'll get um, let's say you wanted five lines or five users. So you're gonna get five phone numbers and a sixth number, which is the main number. Right. And okay. so that so what a lot of companies, smaller companies, will do. They will take that main number. Um, generally, if they're taking their old phone number, that the, their main golden number or whatever they use, they make that transfer that port that over to that number. Um, then they would take the fax number associated with that main number and make that the, the main fax line for the office. Um, and again, the 800 number would ring into that main number. But the system is so flexible. If, let's say we set up an office of three of us. And we had a main number and three separate lines, but we wanted all the 800 numbers to ring to Justin directly. We could have that. You right. can set up any sort of uh, workflow, call flow that, that works best for you. So, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, can you, uh, I know you did our setup and we've got, uh, not super complicated, but anyone that's called into us knows that, you know, you choose what department you're going to and right. it brings you to either the account manager or, or engineers. Uh, how is that, how does that setup process work? Like, what did you have to do to get that up and running? So, so the setup process is all done uh, through an administration portal. So mm -hmm. besides the desktop app that everybody has access to, there's also a web-based uh, login screen to manage your account as a, a user. Mm -hmm. That user would also, um, the, the, the admin on the account has the ability to flip to an admin view of the portal where they can manage the back end of the system. So it's all done ahead of time. So again, if the three of us wanted to start a company today and you said, hey, we just voted, let's get phones, we would call Ring Central. 30 minutes from now, we would have the actual phone numbers and access to activate and set up the account. And if we weren't uh, in need of actual desk phones, if we didn't have them, we could be live on a fully operational phone system, you know, within 45 minutes. Right. You know, and that includes the ordering, the paying, the setup. It all gets done online. Um, I've, I've administered and, and set up and changed many Ring Central accounts <laughs> from the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> So on my laptop, right, right. Um, it, it's really great. And then when you take the phones into uh, the actual desk phones into account, um, if you get the phones from Ring Central, uh, which they offer as a purchase or, or a, a lease rental type of situation, um, those the minute you order those phones. So again, let's say we set up the phone system and then we had another meeting this afternoon and we all said, hey, let's get three desk phones for ourselves. We would call Ring Central back, say, hey, we want three phones. It's a great. They would procure the order. You would get a follow-up email that it's coming. And shortly after that, once they get procured from the actual distribution or warehouse, however the process works, that actual serial number gets entered into our portal. Mm -hmm. So now right. um, we could then say, we could then actually program some of the features on the phone, uh, like park positions, hold buttons, things like that. Right. So that the minute the box arrives, and again, if we continue to work dispersed like this, we would each get a box at our house, plug in the phone to a data connection. It would load up and all of those programmed features would be active uh, and the phone would start ringing. Very That's, cool. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know I know there's a bunch of integrations around uh, Office 365 and Google, Dropbox, you know, that kind of that. And, you know, uh, I think from a, and I know uh, this, this working in the system, um, 
what happens if you have a lot of users? If you're a much bigger company, like, hey, I want, I, you know, I, I have a call center. What happens then? What, what, what's some, how does that work? Was sometimes we get some requests like that where like people have like, hey, I, I, you know, I have 20, 30 people that need inbound calls, that sort of stuff. And we, you know, this is Ring Central support that kind of uh, environment. Ring Central definitely supports that. They actually have um, a, a, almost a separate product, call center product, right? That they uh, that they they are heavily heavily trying to get out, you know, right. to the public. Right. Um, and that that would be what a lot of you are used to, especially in the last few weeks, changing airplane reservations, and you 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 get a, into a call queue. Yeah. Um, even if even if you call in, and some of the the help centers and call centers you call, they they ask you to, to say ahead of time what your problem is, need to change a ticket, need to do. So the system picks up on that and routes the calls properly. Um, so really, George, I mean, you know, it, it'll go from one user to a thousand users. Right. You know, right. It, it covers it all. Exactly. And again, it, it, and, you know, we are all forced to work remote and be dispersed at this point. But right. really, that's the beauty of this phone system. So anyone who has a VoIP system, uh, especially Ring Central, this was a really smooth transition for them. Yeah. Um, and and again, some of the the calls I've taken in the last uh, two or three weeks from clients have been uh, specifically uh, a phone system was originally set up with um, COVID nineteen not in in their thought process, <laughs> and they, right. and and they were very specific about the white glove experience for their company. And they they want all their calls answered live by receptionists. So right. they don't want a call tree. Press one for sales. Press two for support and, and things like that. But now they're rethinking that, and so um, they can they can build that uh, call tree out in the back end and just sort of leave it there and and simple log into the the admin portal, make a few switches, and you can switch from a live answering receptionist to so it's. It's almost sort of like a, a your your disaster recovery plan, right? You know, so yeah. Oh, so you, know, you hey, can have like you could pre-build a call flow, but not have it go live until you decide you want to have it go live. So, if, like, I'm just thinking for us, absolutely. if we call queue, if we wanted call to queues. do like like a separate weekend or after hours type thing, we could just somebody would flip the switch and be like, okay, this is set up. I think it's automated. Oh, sure. Either way, you yeah, can no, so it, it, time based, right? If you want to, you can do time based. Yeah, if you want to flip, you can do time based. Time based okay. to the to to the the minute and right. the day, really? and okay. multiple, cool. like Saturday morning from eight to twelve, it's going to ring at Justin's house. From twelve to four, it's going to ring at four people's houses, and and you can put that all in place and and just right. leave it. Gotcha. Uh, or like I said, you can have the main switch that sort of says, "Hey." We're going to do live call answering, but in emergency, we want to be able to flip the switch and, and go right. over to this other class. It's very cool. And is is there, um, you know, is uh, so <laughs> that's a good, pretty funny one. <laughs> April, cool, April Fools, all calls go to George now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're three days past that. So yeah. we're not going to be doing that, thankfully. Next year. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> Figure it out, right? Uh, so um, I'm trying to think, what else would you say is important to know, Steph? Uh, JP, what, in your experience, I, mean, I know you've been rolling these systems out from the more technical side in terms of like, you know, is there things that we should think about? I mean, obviously yeah. the world's different than normal rollout where you would have a really planned phased approach and the meeting and, you know, I right, said so the network ready, you know, how, how would you say it will be useful for like, let's say a home user where let's oh. say someone goes, go to like, Oh my God, you know what? My home, my system, my office failed. What happens now? Mm -hmm. I'll give you my number one sort of warning that I tell people when they're moving, especially if they're moving from an old sort of copper line based um, on-premise phone system is um, it's, it's the, the connection of the phone and the quality of the phone call is only as good as the infrastructure of wherever you're set up. So mm -hmm. that being said, if you're working on your laptop somewhere and you're constantly getting the uh, progress bar waiting for a, a web page to load because it's bad data stream or connection, it's going to affect the phone line too. Right. So it, it, it can't beat it can't do anything about that. So, so basically, so basically, you're saying the MCI pin drop 
Yeah. It's not, yeah. Accurate. not, it's not yeah. working here. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm back. Showing the age here. Oh, wait. Yeah, anyway. When we, do, when we do deploys for an office, I mean, our uh, experience with it too is building that, that robust network piece and putting in uh, like quality of service rules and making sure that the uh, ISP lines are set up properly and those sorts of things so that right. we can, you know, get the most out of what's available. Uh, at least what I found in terms of using it, uh, using the soft phone, the software on the uh, laptop or on my cell phone, uh, the same rules apply to everything else. Wire is better than wireless. Uh, but yes. what I've also yeah, been course. able to, to do is, uh, I mean, if you have unlimited data, it's really easy on your cell phone plan to switch off of Wi-Fi and go into 4G. And mm. that works really well. And for a lot of uh, carriers now, when you're doing voice calls off your phone, it's their version of VoIP over 4G anyway. So it's the same quality as, as cell phone. Gotcha. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. But yeah, there's uh, uh, when we're doing that that full deploy for an office when things get back to in office, that right. uh, is part of what we always do: split, set up the network properly, set up the firewall rules properly, and make sure that 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 we get the most out of the bandwidth that's there to get the highest right. quality. Exactly, set it up properly, separate VLANs as is needed, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Sorry, I use a tech term. I apologize. <laughs> it's, it's a habit. But that, <laughs> so, but that being said, I always follow up my statement earlier with the bells and whistles and features far outweigh um, a, a once in a while bad call connection. Right. I, I agree. I agree. This use it, and you know, it's funny. I found myself. Uh, I have actually a, a full handset at home here because I work from home. Uh, fairly regularly. And I find myself more and more using the soft phone because it's easier and I can yep. get dial quicker. I can, you know, take my contacts from within uh, Outlook. I you know there's integration in the Outlook. If you use that, uh, there's even a web integration. If you don't have the full desktop version, that's super useful. I found I was uh, just playing with it the other day, just kind of seeing, uh, you know, what, what, what do you get more efficiency out of it? And uh, I thought that was really cool. And, you know, just if you're making a lot of calls, you're not dialing. And as someone who sits like yeah. across the desk, like uh, 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 trying to dial, this is great because you're not, you know, you're not like miss fumble fingering the numbers. So that's a super useful thing. Um, what else do we need to know about this? That'd be useful. Su support. Support oh, is really, oh, yeah, really key. Yeah. So uh, again, um, there's a lot of our clients that are uh, sort of uh, really proud to be hands on. And, and, and actually understand how to do things, which is great. I have always been that type of person. And so <laughs> the system can be learned and programmed, you know, by any any sort of in-house admin that, that a company has, you know, to make changes on the fly. You don't have to rely on the old days of someone coming out and uh, taking a laptop and, and a line to your I don't want to throw out the term again, PBX box there in the office, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, and make changes, you know, it, it can really be done. And especially if that person who, who, who's deemed the admin is not in the office, those changes can be made remotely, which is key. And then the most, most important, you guys hear me preach all the time is the ring central support itself. You call into ring central and even in the last, uh, you know, two, three, four weeks, with I'm sure a, a huge influx of calls to their their yeah. data center, um, the calls are answered within minutes, and the right. support is phenomenal. Uh, I have never in, in six seven years been left uh, or hang up a call where something was not resolved. It's again top top five ever of uh, support <laughs> for me. Yeah, so that's important. I mean, look for us as a we're a service organization and you know, when people try to call us and they don't get answered, they don't get through to us. It's, it's, it makes their experience so miserable for them. Our job is to make people actually able to work and actually able to do the thing they're supposed to be doing. And so if we're, if our phone system is not working properly, yeah. we look, we, a, we look really bad and B, we, we can't accomplish all this, <coughs> which is the two, um, to serve, to serve our customers and get them back to work, get them working and make them uh, productive. Um, so 
if anyone has any questions, I'm going to think it's time to wrap up. I think for the thing before we go too crazy, I know Steph can go for a couple more hours on this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is what I'm passionate about. I know, I know yeah. it's great. I love it. One. I love it. So, um, once again, if you, anyone has any questions about Ring Central, we love to send them to us. You can go on our website. We have a, a special Ring, Ring Central landing page. We've been flashing here. It's uh, the Valiant Way slash Ring Central. Um, give us a call at 646 775 2771. You will mm -hmm. absolutely get an answer. Um, and, you know, honestly, we're here to help. If, even if you're not a customer, just shoot us a call. Get us know what's going on, and we'll, we'll see if we can help you. Um, with that, I'm going to say uh, please take a look at our streams and there's some other ones in there that might be useful for you while you're working from home. Um, you know, this is our new normal, so we're trying to get some um, – just getting some content out there to help you. And I'm so excited about our next okay. session, by the yep. way. Uh, we have another very special guest, uh, my business partner, Gene McMurray, our CTO. Uh, he's going to do a really deep dive into Wi-Fi. It may be really egghead, real, real technical, which I think is super excited. It's a little, it may be a little much, but bear with us. You'll learn something. You'll walk out of the building. I didn't, I didn't even know we needed, I didn't even know how it did that. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. And there's going to be some uh, accompanying uh, blog posts and some more information about it, about how to optimize your Wi-Fi at home. And it'll give you some insight on how Wi-Fi works in general. And, you know, this technology has become so important. So please tune in uh, Monday morning at 1030. Uh, with Justin and I and our very special guest, uh, Jimmy Murray. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. And gentlemen, I appreciate your Bye. time. And again, care, everyone. final reminder, like you said, there is a space on our website. Anybody who watches this after this record, after this live uh, on recording, the website uh, has a, a question form. If you have any questions on this, uh, Fire obviously away. reach out to us. Exactly. Well, thank yep. you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye, -bye. See you, guys. Bye.